Well, hi everyone. I'm going to change it up with today's video and I want to talk about the situation with Boeing. I've done videos in the past about things that are going on with Boeing. They've made news for all the wrong reasons lately, but they're working through some issues with their Starliner manned crew capsule that's currently docked with the International Space Station. And I actually think Boeing and NASA are doing a great job uh, working through the issues. I think they're being very disciplined and they're definitely taking an engineering approach, a data-driven approach to getting as much information as they can, maximizing the benefit of this crew mission, and we'll be able to apply these lessons on future space flights. Now, contrary to what you've been seeing in the news, it's not the dire situation that a lot of the media outlets are presenting right now. I mean, here's a headline from the Independent. Astronauts are stuck on International Space Station indefinitely after problems with Boeing Starliner. I mean, that is extremely over the top and misleading. Fact is, they left for a planned eight-day mission. They were perfectly capable of extending it, which they have. There's been problems with helium leaks. They knew they had one helium leak, and then they developed about five as they were docking Starliner with the ISS. And the helium is used for the propulsion system, for the thrusters that are used for maneuvering of the capsule. NASA and Boeing have said all along that if the Starliner and the crew needed to return at any point, they could. But instead what they're doing is they're doing additional testing, collecting data, they're running simulations or, t or really trying to replicate the issue with a facility in New Mexico. And they're just being very methodical and maximizing the amount of information. So it's interesting to me. I can understand the, the drama aspect of it, but it's really unfair, I think, to both Boeing and to NASA with some of these more sensationalistic headlines. So in today's video, I wanna provide more detail what's going on, but I really wanna put this in the context of an engineering process. And that's the main reason I'm doing this video. I mean, for me, human spaceflight embodies the most challenging and most interesting aspects of engineering. And it involves virtually every field in engineering at some point, particularly when you're talking about a manned space flight, as well as going to the moon and beyond. So as I mentioned, there's these helium leaks. They're very small. NASA has said that they've got 10 times the amount of helium that they would need to get a safe return of the capsule and the two astronauts. This is a, a view of the Starliner capsule. You have the crew capsule on top, you have the heat shield and you have the service module and the service module is what contains the helium tanks and some of which have been leaking. Some of the thrusters weren't properly operating in the run up to the docking with the ISS. They've since been able to restore functionality to all but one of those thrusters. But as it stands right now, they've got plenty of capability to return to earth when they're ready to. Here you have the two astronauts that are currently on board the ISS and will be traveling back on Starliner. And both of these individuals are not only astronauts, they're both former Navy test pilots. And this crewed mission is a test mission, it's a test flight. So these are the kind of people that you want to work through problems, stay calm, handle the unexpected, and that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, these are really rock star professionals and the kind of people that really make you proud to be an American. So why is it important for NASA to be able to rely on commercial entities to get to low Earth orbit, to the ISS in particular. So right now you have SpaceX's Dragon crew capsule. They've been taking people to the ISS for a few years now. And now with Boeing Starliner, that program has been seriously delayed. Uh, Boeing has lost over $1.5 billion in cost overruns. It hasn't gone well, but again, they're, they're staying the course and they're committed to seeing this through. So I think it's very important for NASA to have at least two commercial entities capable of getting people safely to and from the ISS. Since the shuttle quit flying in 2011, the only other option besides the two commercial options would be to fly astronauts on a Russian Soyuz. And NASA has an arrangement with Russia through 2025 to do that if necessary. Now, obviously the politics and the optics wouldn't be so great right now, but that's the good thing about the space program. There are overarching goals that tend to transcend 
really important international issues that aren't related to space. So let's take a quick look at the shuttle launch, just to remind you. All three engines up and burning. Two, one, zero, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. Well, of course, there were two catastrophic losses of space shuttle craft, the Challenger and Columbia. And if you look back at the findings from both of those catastrophes, it was mismanagement, it was political pressure, it was people not heeding prudent engineering precautions and procedures. And again, if you look at how methodical both Boeing and NASA's being in this episode, even though they're getting all kinds of heat about, oh, they're st the astronauts are stranded, are they ever gonna be able to come back? I mean, it's just, it's just nonsense, but they're just staying focused on getting the data. It's extremely unlikely that a situation would arise where NASA and Boeing would say, you know what, the Starliner's not safe to return uh, humans back to Earth and we're going to do something else. But I give them credit that they would, in fact, do that if necessary to protect the lives of these astronauts. You know, you compare what happened with uh, Challenger. There were warnings about leaks in the O-rings for the solid rocket boosters that went unheated by upper level managers. And then with Columbia, those involved knew that some foam from the external fuel tank impacted the bottom side of the shuttle where all the heat tiles are located. And those heat tiles dissipate the heat of re-entry, but they didn't really do a lot to, to study it. They didn't send the astronauts on an EVA. There were no rescue contingencies planned. They just decided to bring them back. And of course it ended in utter tragedy. And that's one thing I wanna to mention too. I've been to the space centers in Alabama, Houston, and Florida if you go to the Kennedy Space Center, there's an exhibit. It's basically opposite sides of a, of a room or a hall. And on each side is, uh, one side is the wreckage, some of the wreckage they recovered from Challenger. And on the other side is wreckage that they recovered from Columbia. And it's very sobering. And I think if you ever have an opportunity to be in and around Kennedy Space Center in Florida, you owe it to yourself to check out that, that display, that exhibit. So let's go over a few details. Starliner launched on June 5th, 2024 with the two astronauts. The flight was originally scheduled for eight days with short stay at the ISS. But then the issue with the thrusters and the helium leaks uh, arose. And so now they're doing a lot of studying right now. You know, the media wants to make it sound like this was a situation like the SS Minnow where the people went out for a three hour tour and then couldn't come back. Now let's Look at a quick video of the launch of Starliner from June 5th, 2024. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V, carrying two American heroes, drawing a line to the stars for all of us. All right, so that's the launch. And then the next day is when Starliner docked with the ISS. Let's look at some footage from that. As they were approaching the ISS, they had various hold points where they were firing the thrusters and working through the issues that they were having with some of the thrusters. So you can see the upper portion of the crew capsule. It's got a hatch open so it can dock with the ISS. It's amazing how smoothly this goes. Now let's look at some of the components of Starliner. You have the crew capsule, the heat shield, which you can't see, and the service module on the bottom. Starliner was assembled at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida by Boeing. This is an animation of what it looks like in flight. Just another view of what the docking would look like. Now, I want to show some segments of an interview with 
the Starliner astronauts that was conducted just a few days ago. I'm recording this video on Saturday, July 13th. So we've been thoroughly busy up here, integrated right into the crew. And uh, every, every about once a week, we get to jump into Starliner and talk to our control team there and work through all uh, the new nuances that, are, that they're working, that they're working very hard on the ground to make sure that we uh, will be able to come home before too long. That sounds great. Thanks, Butch and Sunny. Uh, let's jump into some questions. We're going to start with Bill Harwood with CBS News. Um, Butch, given what you just what you just told us in your remarks, um, based on what you know today, how confident are you that the Starliner will get you home safely, given the known helium leaks and the earlier thruster issues? And as test pilots, are you satisfied you have a workable backup procedures in place if the normal deorbit plan cannot be executed for some reason? Thanks. Yeah, thank you. for That's a good question, Bill, obviously. Um, yes, I'll say yes to all of those questions. We're absolutely confident. We've already, as Sonny mentioned, for Safe Haven, we had that uh, uh, test, not just the, the, the test, but also to, to do it for real when we had that possible conjunction a few weeks ago. And we got in Starliner, we were ready to go. Everything's in place as far as what we know now. That's a, that is a good point. We are actually doing thruster testing as we speak at White Sands, New Mexico, going through that process, uh, trying to replicate what we saw on that flight day two when we were rendezvousing, and we are, we're going to learn from that, and we're going to incorporate new processes, new procedures that we will uh, employ if necessary. So obviously, uh, right now, we are ready. Uh, we will be ready then unless the, the, the data shows otherwise, but right now, based on what we know, we are absolutely ready. So there you heard it. I mean, they're absolutely confident, but they're being data-driven. They're not just dogmatically saying, yeah, we're going to come back no matter what. They're saying they anticipate coming back. They're letting the engineers study what's going on and they'll make the decision at the right time. But as you heard, they, they referenced a, or he referenced a conjunction. What he meant there was that there was a Russian satellite that, that disintegrated and uh, the astronauts, uh, the two astronauts here, Williams and Wilmore, they sheltered in the Starliner capsule. So NASA said all along in the case of an emergency, if they need to bring these astronauts back, they can do it right away. Our next question is from Marsha Dunn with the Associated Press. Do you have any qualms whatsoever about returning in the Starliner yourself? Um, why or why not? You know, Marsha, you know, we've, we've been through a lot of simulations for this spacecraft to, you know, go through all sorts of iterations of failures. And I think where we are right now and what we know right now and how the spacecraft flew as it was coming in to do the docking as Butch described, um, I, I feel confident that if we had to, if there was a problem with the International Space Station, we can get in our spacecraft and we can undock, talk to our team, and figure out the best way to come home. Um, yeah, we've, like I said, we've practiced a lot, so I have a feeling, I have a, a real good feeling in my heart that uh, the spacecraft will, br will bring us home, no problem. But like Butch said, we're learning now to make, to optimize our specific situation and make sure that we know everything about it. You know. If we just came home, we'd lose the SM, and then we wouldn't be able to go through all this testing and understand about our spacecraft. So she mentioned what I was mentioning before. They would lose the SM, the service module. So they wouldn't be able to study all the issues with the helium leaks and how it affected the thruster, uh, the valves and the propulsion thrusters and so on. So they're just being very thorough, getting all the data they can, and then they'll bring the astronauts back. You know, it's, it's refreshing to see engineers engaged in a data-driven process and they're putting human safety uh, paramount and it's not like some of the magical thinking that I think we've seen here lately with other situations. So this is footage from the re-entry of a previous uh, Starliner capsule that was unmanned it looks like there's an astronaut in the seat, but that's a mannequin. That's video and sound from inside Starliner during its return to Earth two years ago as part of the Orbital Flight Test 2 mission. Its heat shield will reach 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit during reentry. Parachutes then deploy and the heat shield is discarded to expose Starliner's airbags. The original test pilot you see on the bottom center of your screen, Rosie the Rocketeer, collecting data of what astronauts might experience during landing. 
Starliner is the first and only American orbital crew capsule to land on land. This allows for crew, uh, quicker access to crew and cargo. It also makes turning the spacecraft around for future missions quicker. But Mike, Starliner can also land in water in the case of an emergency. Now I mentioned SpaceX's Dragon capsule. This is what it looks like. And, and the Dragon crew capsule launches on a Falcon 9 rocket. Here's a picture of Russian Soyuz. That's the other option. Again, not, not very high on the list, but still nonetheless a, a technical option to bring astronauts home if necessary. Now let's uh, play this segment here from CBS News about issues with Falcon 9. The FAA has just grounded any further launches of Falcon 9 until additional studies can be done to figure out why there was a a loss of the craft, uh, starting with the second, second stage firing, and resulted in uh, payload of Starlink satellites not making it to the intended orbit, and they apparently are in a low enough orbit that th it'll decay and these uh, satellites will burn up on re-entry into the atmosphere. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket suffered a catastrophic engine failure as it launched a batch of Starlink satellites into orbit last night. The incident happened during the second leg of the mission. This is the first time in nearly a decade the rocket has failed. So all the uh, news media that's hyping that the Starliner astronauts might be stranded and they'll have to come back uh, in a Dragon capsule, uh, that's off the table for right now, uh, even if that were to be the plan in the most extremely unlikely set of circumstances. You know, uh, SpaceX was planning to launch, uh, have some upcoming launches for Falcon 9 to have some astronauts uh, go EVA in low Earth orbit. And that was towards the end of July. And then in August, there was gonna be a launch to take people to the ISS. So I think it's uh, highly likely that those launches will be rescheduled for a much later date. So I'll keep abreast of this situation. I think it's extremely interesting, but Again, I'm really gratified to see how Boeing and NASA has been handling the whole situation. And again, I just am in amazement of the two astronauts here, uh, Wilmore and Williams. Well, I wanna send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support. I also would like to send a shout out to those of you who provided super thanks. Check out a link in the description. I have a free digital download which summarizes the Artemis program. It's NASA's extensive and ambitious program to return humans to the surface of the moon. This time it'll be on the South Pole. So it's quite interesting, a lot of moving parts to it. So check that out. Thanks for watching everyone.